Let's take a look at Iterator. Iterator is a very powerful initiator uh, that can be used to create something like a for loop in programming where we can iterate through a number of values and generate a number of results all in one time step. Uh, simplest way we can show this, we'll set this iterator's count to 10. This means he's going to generate numbers 0 through 9. Iterator's 0 based, so remember that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that to generate a series of particles in a line here. Uh, we, don't want, we don't want them all to be in actual max units numbers, so we're going to use a 0.3 and multiply those numbers coming in by certain, by 5. And then we're going to feed this into a position born. And we're going to born one particle per call into the red group. So what we're going to do is take this iterator's number output, feed that into the x value, so iterator is going to output 0 through 9 all in one time step. That 0 through 9 is going to come into the x value here, get multiplied by 5. It's going to generate 10 vectors, position vectors. We can use those position vectors to feed into the position born. So for each one of these point threes that position born receives, he's going to born one particle per call. Okay, so he's actually, he receives 10 calls here because our iterator is set to 10 we can see that these particles are being borne out in a line and let's go ahead and actually give this a little more control we don't want because if, as we scrub we see these guys being born and fanning out they're being given speed and direction variation let's change that speed to zero we're going to set their lifespan to 99 and we only want to activate this position born once we'll activate it at time of zero Oops. let's put that there Okay, so now what we get, we don't get any motion, that's good. Um, let's say we want to make this a little more complicated. We want to iterate upon iterations. Uh, we want not only the x value, but we want to generate a row of 10 um, this way, out the y direction. Well, you might think, oh, let's just duplicate the iterator, take that number and feed it into the y value. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't work because you cannot um, have initiators uh, run in parallel like this. Uh, what you have to do is run them in series. So the way you're going to do this is you're going to expose the iterator, second iterator's on input, use the first iterator's on input to drive that. And now what happens is it goes ahead and creates, oops, for each one of these um, first iterators, this x value, for each one of those, it's also going to create 10 more uh, values out in the y direction. So we can create a whole grid here. And then it's a pretty easy step to go ahead and cr take that and feed it into the z value, using that number there. And we'll get a whole cube. So there's a great example, a sample scene called, I think it's called Cube World. Take a look at that for a really elegant way to use uh, Iterator as well. Uh, there's some other outputs to Iterator. We've got number normalize, which is a, a scalar value value from 0 to 1. This just gives you an indication of where it's at in its counting process. It starts off at 0, when the count is 0, and then it's going to end up with a, a number normalize of 1 when it reaches its maximum value. And just remember, Iterator is 0 based, so the maximum value is the count minus 1, so 0 through 9. And let's go ahead and see what else we've got. The width. The width is actually um, going to output the same value every time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and expose the size uh, for these position born particles just so we can use the write to debug log. Gotta love debug. And we can see the iterator width is 0.1 every time. This is a constant. It's just going to tell us each step. Um, Oh, what is the amount of change that I'm doing per count? Uh, and that's not going to change. It's evenly divided among the counts, so that's always a, st a standard. So if you increase this, and we'll see that debug finally catch up. Uh, with a value of 13, our step's going to be 0 0.0769231. Um, that can be used, the width, that can be used if you wanted to kind of accumulate values and determine like an averaging. Um, do some experimenting with that one. Um, so this is kind of our first simple take a look at iterator. And we're going to go ahead and do another 
a sample video where we have particles uh, memorize other particles and then iterate through that those uh, memorized particles. So that'll be next.